Check it out live in the place to be, y'all. It's your man, Knife Wonder. Grammy Award winning producer, DJ, college professor, member of the University of Zulu Nation. Shouts out to Africa Bambata and King DJ Mark Love. And checking out Hip Hop Wired. Peace. Now, you mentioned the story. So, the Knife Wonder story, for people that don't know, you started with Little Brother, you left the group, you know, you went on and produced with Jay Z and, you know, other artists, Beyonce, like, and stuff like that. And then um, with Little Brother, you know, you guys had a little friction. But recently, you, you and Fonte got back together and started working together. So, what, what brought y'all two back together? Well, I mean, as the story goes, it wasn't necessarily that I left, you know. It was more of a just men not always being men. You know, we were still boys at the time. Thought we were men and we were growing up. So the fault was on all of ours. But, you know, I had done those Jay-Z records and Beyonce records within the confines of Little Brother. I was still, we hadn't put out the minstrel show yet by the time I had three rec- one record with Jay-Z and three records with Destiny Child. So um, when it came to but time was part ways if that's what it was and then recently you know and, and so you know in a way that I don't discuss but me and Fonte decided to talk and so we talked and you know we are where we are now he's, he's uh, dropping the project we're both dropping the albums on the same day uh, September 27th we are both co-executing, so co-executive producing a, a, a album by Justice League Brother Median. Um, he's on my record, I'm on his. We're both on Median's record. I help him um, to promote and push his label because that's his dream. Foreign exchange is his dream. He's always been that that cat to go down an alternative lane, and he knows I've always been this hip hop to the death, and so. It all worked out in the end. You probably wouldn't be here doing this interview with me if it didn't work out like it was supposed to work out. So, you know, I'm happy the way it did, man. It just taught us a lot to be apart for four years like that. It taught us a lot about ourselves and each other. And, you know, we done been through it now, so ain't nothing else to get mad about. Right. That's okay. Now, the record that most people heard, like the comeback record, so to speak, was a record that you produced. We had Little B on there, mm-hmm. Fonte, and Gene, Gene Gray. Gray. Now that combination, like people, you know, with Little B being the kind, the kind of artist that he is, it kind of threw people off. But the record came out great, came out dope. Like how, you know, how did you guys even hook up with Little B to begin with? Well, first we had to understand and know exactly what type of artist Little B is. I think everybody's looking at Little B from the surface and thinking, oh, this clown, this, that, and the third, or whatever, yada, yada, yada. Okay. You know, Lil B reached out to me, and we spoke on Twitter uh, in DM, and he told me, on DM, and he told me that he wanted to do an album with me, and I was like, I didn't know who he was at first. This is, this is last year. I didn't know. And, you know, I reached out to a couple of my homies in the game, and it was like, Lil B, like, Lil B reached out to you? Like, what's going on? That just goes to putting each other in boxes. Mm-hmm. The one thing that Jay Z taught me is that I saw is you can't put people in boxes, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like it just ain't gonna work. Like you know, that comes with just growing up, though. And so he did a re- he did a record with uh, Tony Yayo, and a partner Crisis who's in the Soul Council came to me and was like, "Yo, man, like hear that record Lil B did with Tony Yayo, and he's actually you know saying a few words on there." I'm like, "Okay." I said, something ain't right. I said, you know, there's some people that do records and they're really dumb and you can hear that they're dumb, but there's some people that do records and it sounds like a joke. It sounds like it's a, you're playing. And I was like, for, for, for some strange reason, it sounds like he's playing. I don't think it's necessarily it. And so, did the research, you know, found out he was in the pack. Um, and it advanced that song. And so, I hit him on DM and, they, and he hit me back. I said, man, call me, man. Got on the phone with a man that had the best hour and a half conversation I had with a 22-year-old in a long time from this game. Mm. And I listened to him more than he I talked. And I said, man, I knew someone, right? Like, I knew. He said, man, I, I grew up all, we was talking about Quasimodo and Mad Lib and all type of stuff. Mm. And so he's like, man, see my record, I'll show you what I can do. So I sent them bass for your face. I made the beat right there in the studio and I said, I'm going to use 
Space for your face, babe. And, I was, and then, you know, I sent it to him. And what really sealed the deal was, shoot, Fonte. I sent it to Tay. And Tay was like, you really want to shake the world up? Let me get on it. And I like, all right. So, and then I sent it to Jean. And she was like, this is dope. And it's, it's music, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just... I, the whole underground, overground, that's, man, that's dead. That's been dead for a while. And, you know, there's a certain sound that's with the underground. And there's a quote-unquote certain sound that's supposed to be with mainstream or whatever. But man, all that really don't even matter now. Because real recognize real. I've been around. I've been recognized by the most underground artist to a young bird. Real recognize real. So it don't. that's what all it is with me. A little B, man. Be a good dude.